This is the new layers menu inside of Canva. And yes, you can move things forwards and backwards, which is really great and has been so long awaited, but there's more to this menu than you might think straight away. Let's dive in and let me show you. Good morning, good evening, good night, wherever you are. Today, we're gonna to look at 25, 26, 27 tips and tricks of how to use Canva better. So let's dive in, we've got so many to cover off. Let's dive in and get started straight away. One of my new favorite, most anticipated and weighted menu options is the position option or the position menu. So when you're in a design, you'll see it, it'll come up here up at the top, just click on that, and you've got all these new options here. I'm gonna start off with the Arrange option. First option here under the Arrange menu is if we highlight something here, we can now come in here and we can move something forwards and backwards. That's really easy to see, but we're gonna come up to another trick in a few moments on how to move things forwards and backwards. Next one obviously is the keyboard shortcut for moving things forwards and backwards, which is the command or the control key on a keyboard, and then the bracket key. The third thing in this menu that I want to show you, and this is the one that I really want and I'm most excited about in this menu area here, and that is we can now set a specific rotation angle so beforehand if you come up and you said you like yo you wanted to rotate this you might have been like that and then say you wanted to rotate the back you'd be kind of trying to line them up and trying to figure out how to line them up correctly but let's say we can come into this menu here and we can say we want that to be a minus five degree angle and we want that to also be a minus five degree angle that happens to be that's what i had it set at but say you wanted it as a minus six or seven, you could do, and then come in and change that to a minus seven. So you've got their angles there and you can set them up easily and also make sure all of the elements on your page are, have the same angle. And for me, that's really important as a designer because I see things like slightly off all the time and it really, really bugs me um, because, you know, attention to detail. If you want it to go anti-clockwise, it's minus. If I wanted that to go clockwise, it'd just be a seven in there. You can see in there as well. Again, I can just type in a seven and it puts those two. If I want to put those two back to zero, I can do. And if I wanted to make sure everything was horizontal, I could come in here and make sure that the angle was at zero for all of them. So it's a really quick tip on how to make sure all of your elements are straight. Now this next one might not be apparent exactly on what it actually does at first, but you can actually now lock the ratio of uh, an element or an image that you want and then change the width or the height to specific specifics height or pixels and then that's going to automatically adjust it for you let me show you okay so i've come in and i've put in a new page on here i've just added any old image but let's say i want this pixel or this image to only be 200 pixels wide you can see if i just type in 200 pixels wide it's going to then crop that but that's not what we want. We want to lock the ratio so it automatically adjusts the height as well. So if I come in here now, I've clicked on the lock item there. If I come in and type 200, you can see it automatically shrinks that image. So it says, right, well, if you want this to be 200 wide, then the maximum height you can have is 300. And that's going to make sure it keeps the aspect ratio locked for you. The next tip I've got for you to make sure your elements are all lined up correctly is making sure that things are center aligned and justified all, all that kind of like center and middle and making sure that they're all correct. Now there's two things that you need to be aware of on here. If I just select one item and I click center and middle, that's gonna put it in the middle of the canvas, which is great. But let's say we want these two items to be off to the side, but I want that square box to be in the center in the middle of the actual image. I can come in, I can highlight both of those and I can then click center and middle. And now even though that image is off to the side and the box is off to the side, it's making sure that that box is in the center and the middle of the image that I've created. Now, if I wanted to do that and then make sure that the whole thing was centered and middled, all I'd come up to is click group. And then once the two items are grouped together, we can click center and middle. And that then makes sure that our item is all justified and centered and middled correctly and lined up correctly. By using this technique, it's gonna make sure your designs are so much better and it's really gonna make your designs stand out so much more. So if you're selling templates or you're creating templates for a client or anything else like that, making sure you've got your alignment correct is 
key. Under the position menu here, you've also now got the Canva layers or layers. This is the new layers menu inside of Canva. And yes, you can move things forwards and backwards, which is really great and has been so long awaited, but there's more to this menu than you might think straight away. Let's dive in and let me show you. So I'm gonna start off with this really simple design and show you that the first thing you can do is you can move things up and down and you can move them all around. And if you start adding in their text, say we've got some text on here and we come back to the position menu, I can put make sure that that's on there. And if I wanted to move things forwards and backwards, I wanna make sure that the image is at the bottom. I can do all of that. And this is really handy when things are hidden. Say like I've got that text there below that right now. Um, let's say it was partly here and I couldn't quite, there was other things overlapping and I couldn't quite get to that. Then, you know, I can come in here, highlight it. Once it's highlighted, it's gonna allow me to then just drag this. You can see even here over the square, if I can still drag that item because I've selected it in the layers menu, I can still drag that item, even though normally it would have selected the menu or the box on top. And similar to what we showed you before, you can now actually select multiple items. So I can collect, either click shift and that's going to allow me to select a selection. Or if I wanted to say just select the top one and the bottom one, I'm pressing and holding down the command key on a Mac or the, it'll be the control key on a Windows keyboard. And I can then select multiple items and I can now choose to group these just these two items. You'll see that in the layers panel there, it shows you that those items are now grouped and it actually labels this as a group of items. So I can come in and you can see there, it's got the text, but I can move these two items independently and I can change the size of them if I wanted to. It's not gonna affect that. So I can come in and just select that one area or you can come in and select just that one area and group those items. If I want to ungroup those again, I can do. And that's gonna then split out those layers for us to be able to work with them independently. So this is an, another tip under here and using the layers panel. Let's say I wanted to change the color of the square. I've got that behind some text now and it's behind the image. So I can't actually select that. What I can come do is come over to the position menu, select layers, and that's then gonna allow me to select that layer. It changes the top here and I can now choose to change that color to whatever it is that I want to change it to. So now we're on to tip number 10. And just before I hit tip number 10, I wanna say really appreciate you being here. And if you're finding these tips really useful, make sure you click that like button down below, it really helps get this video out to more people and helps share this information with more people to be able to create better design. Tip number 10, and that is the three dots menu. Now, if you're not aware of the three dots menu in Canva, wherever you see this three dots menu is also like, there's always an extended menu behind that so you can click on the three dots menu and you can now choose to do things like copy copy style paste duplicate you can see all the keyboard shortcuts here you can use it this area to move things forwards and backwards and you can see the keyboard shortcut options down here you can align to the page left right top bottom middle you can add in comments you can make a link to this area here you can lock it on the page so it locks the position only or you can lock it fully. You can add in here now alternative text, and you can also set the image as a background image, or you can apply the colors from the image to the page. Three dot menus in Canva. If you're not using them, make sure you are aware of them because there's so much there. And I think that's actually just, I've given away more of the tips in that one menu. In tip number 10, we've actually covered off a few of the tips, but I'm just gonna go through them quickly so you are aware of them and you can see them actually being used. We can see now I've actually set this image to the background and you can see it's changed here. This actually hashtag image or this little hash area here shows that this image is now the background. I can click on the three dots there and I, you, can, you can now choose to detach this image from the background and that's gonna make sure that that image is removed from the background. Again, if I want to, I can attach the image or set the image as the background image. And we can double click in here and we can move this up and down. 
we can smart crop so it's going to know which area to smart crop into that image it's going to zoom in on the cake for that option so that's the layers panel and i think you'll agree inside of canva now using that layers panel is going to make designing your templates and creating your designs inside of canva so much easier it's unbelievable and just mwah, chef's kiss on that one canva chef's kiss but this isn't the end of the tips we've got four more tips for you on video and some other tips after that so let's dive in and have a look at these tips when using video in canva so one of the things inside of canva you'll have seen or you may have may have not noticed is that you either start with a design like this and you have you know you can add animation to it or sometimes you get like a video timeline down the bottom and you think like oh I really wish I'd done this design in a video design. Well, you don't have to worry about that anymore. If you click on this little menu down the bottom here and you click the duration, it now changes your design to a video template. Boom, mind blown. And I can come in here, I've got all the options to add in transitions, I can add in pages, I can adjust the timeline here. The only one thing that I've just spotted during this video is that when I select multiple elements, at the moment, I don't have element timing. I'm not sure where that's gone. I'm gonna to have to make sure I check that one with Canva, but at the moment, it doesn't seem to see like you can do element timing when you swap between these types of menu options here. So if you are wanting to do element timing, make sure you start with a video template right now. The next tip I've got for you when it comes to using video inside of Canva, and that is say you've done one of the designs and you wanted to just download this one page or this one page, or you wanted to download them both at the same time, but not in the same file. You can now do that in Canva. If you come up to the top here to the share menu, click download, choose MP4, you'll see now here, it is a pro option so if you're not using canva pro there's a 45 day trial of canva pro down in the description below and over on my website better content creators so there we go you can see once i've downloaded that and i've opened up the zip file i've now got two different distinct files in here the next tip on here is something that's not a visual it is now that you can add up to 50 audio tracks inside a video file it was 20 but now you can add up to 50 audio tracks the next tip that a lot of people have been asking for is to find templates from creators that you follow so say if you follow me um, which is canva.com forward slash better content creators you can come over to templates and under here you now get the option here where you see creators you follow and that's now going to show you all of the template creators that you follow inside of Canva. And if you're not following me already, I'll put a link down below to my templates that I've created on Canva. A lot of them you can use with the free Canva account, but there's also some pro options in there. Again, there's a link down below in the description and over on my website to the 45 day trial of Canva Pro. The next two tips I've got for you are if you're using Canva websites, let's dive in and let me show you what you can now do with Canva websites. So this is my demo website that I've created using Canva. And now when you have a Canva website, you can now choose to animate certain elements on the page. So when the page loads or when someone visits your website, those animations are gonna start playing, whether that's a wipe, a pop, baseline or all those basic animations that you can now apply to your websites inside of Canva to give it more dynamic feel. Really liking that touch. Thank you so much for adding that one Canva. The next one on websites is if you've actually purchased your domain through Canva, you can actually now go in and change your name servers. I haven't done that myself. I don't purchase my domains through Canva, but if you are doing that and you need something a little bit more technical, you can now change the name servers of your Canva website. Next, I wanna show you four quick tips on editing your images inside of Canva. And these tips are really useful and really helpful when it comes to making sure your images are the right size and also that they're straight. So we're gonna come in, I've got this image here. We're gonna cut to edit photos and we'll now see we've got the adjust option here. We can auto adjust our image and that's gonna change the colors of the image to be either brighter or enhance them and make them more like they should be. It's an auto adjust and you'll see it's gonna change the contrast, the brightness, highlights, shadows, all of those. And you can still further come down and further tweak these or you can 
reset or just select the foreground or the background on this to be able to do that. The next tip we've got here is cropping your images. So you've actually got a smart crop now. You can either come in and you can crop to a particular size or you can click smart crop. So it's gonna come in and it's actually gonna crop your image. As you see, it straightened up that image a little bit and it's choosing a better area of the image. The next one is if you want to automatically straighten up an image, you can come in, you can click edit photo, you can click crop and next to rotate, you can click auto. You can see that's going to do exactly what it did before when we did the smart crop, but it's going to keep the aspect or the, as much of the original image in there as it can do. It's just going to straighten up the image for you. So if, you're, if you've taken a picture of um, like landscape image and the horizon isn't quite straight, then it's going to come in and it's going to straighten up the horizon for you. And it's AI, you know, that, that's what it is. It's AI learning and trying to figure out what it is in that image and what how it looks better and how it should be really how it should look straighter the next tip is animation variations for pages so now if you select your page you can see up here i've got page animations i can choose to pan and choose whether i want that on both enter exit i can change the speed and i can change the direction you can also reverse the animation on exit if that's what you want to do but animation options inside of page animations has now there's now more to it basically three more tips and we're done don't forget to click that like button click the subscribe button down below if you're finding these tips really useful i've got so many more tips to share with you over the coming months so do make sure you click those buttons down below and also over on my website i do have a beginner course on getting started with canva so if you're new to canva check out that that's down below as well i've got three apps that i want to show you now if you're not aware of apps inside of canva they're kind of like a little bit of an add-on in there they're created sometimes by another company or another developer or something like that but there's three apps that i want to show you the first one I want to show you is Smart Mockups inside of the apps here. They've now added it inside here as well. We can now do click here, we can click use, and there's now more options inside of the Smart Mockups here inside of Canva. So I'm just going to switch back to the page, no reason other than it's just a little bit less distracting. And I can now come in, say I wanted to add my elements to this, so I can come in and I can come to photos we're going to click this one this is the photo i want to add in here and it's going to go away and it's going to actually add that photo to that that doesn't quite work i want to edit that photo and now i can choose either to fit you can see it's got that space at the top and the bottom but i want to actually fill this to the frame and there you go so when you come in and use smart mockups inside of the canva area here now you've actually got more options when you click the edit button here so go in have a play about with some of the smart mockups there's so many to choose from and i really like using those smart mockup options inside of canva the next app i want to show you is follow code i really like this one for creating qr codes you can create all sorts of different design patterns you can have little love hearts triangles diamonds you can change the color of this and all you do is you put in there your website type in the page there hit enter i can add a logo if i wanted to so once you've actually signed up you can then just click create my flow code and that's going to create the code for you and you can come in you can create different variations you can choose different colors and choose different options so if i wanted red hearts create that create my flow code and that's going to then just create that for you and you can put this into a design i actually have this on my screen here i have it as a sort of like screensaver so if i'm out and about and people say oh what's your website i can just show them the qr code and i got that tip from ronnie so thank you very much ronnie for that tip really appreciate that by putting a qr code as my screen saver or my lock code there so people can always you know if i lost my phone people can even come in scan that and find out whose phone it is and contact me that way and the last app that i want to show you or highlight in this set of tips when using canva is canva text to image if you've not used it then i don't know where you've been but canva text to image is really good fun to play about with type in something that you want to create like i want a panda riding uh, bike in new york 
okay i'm going to come over i want that to be a retro anime and i want to start creating my image again that's going to go away it's going to create it it's using ai inside of canva to go away and create that image and there we go we've got some like retro anime i actually really like some of these items this one i wish that was like filled out a little bit more but yeah that's what we've got we've got all sorts of retro anime <laughs> kind of a little bit weird <laughs> but i kind of like them and yeah that's all the tips i've got for you today so thank you very much don't forget to click like subscribe all the links down below in the description until next time thank you very much bye for now